We're here at the Grand Hotel Champagne Bar with Liam McGrath Goodman. Uh, I've managed to get a few words before you're off to Dubai in the morning. Um, welcome back to the island. And uh, can you tell us what you've been doing since you've been here? Well, it's been, I guess, a little over 500 days since I've been away. And um, it's really wonderful to be back. And I really miss the island very much and the people on it. Um, obviously, there was a lot to be done, and this week we knew that the Committee of Inquiry was going to name a chairman, as Ali Bradley. So that's a great time for me to come back. And it was important to continue the research this week. So, what we were doing was meeting with a group of um, people who had been in care at Hot Dela Garan in particular, and some of the other homes. And then also talking to some of the um, former politicians as well as sitting politicians on the islands who had things to say about how the redress scheme has been going and how uh, perhaps this committee of inquiry may be able to do some of the unfinished work of the investigation involving Operation Rectangle. And how is, what have you learned, how is the redress scheme going from what you've been told by the, the, the people you've spoken with, the victims? What is being said publicly about how the victims are being treated and what's happening behind closed doors are very different things. And we're seeing those examples again and again. I'll give you another example. We're seeing letters that uh, I have, in, they're documented and proof of letters from the law firm that's representing the government, instructing the psychiatrists who evaluate these victims to look at them in a bad light and to look at them as criminals, uh, sometimes often, if they've never had any criminal history. Also to look at them as liars and instructing them that they should be looking at the victims in a way that is as critical as humanly possible. Again, this doesn't show goodwill on the part of the government in trying to really provide redress. Some of the victims' greatest wounds are coming from the fact that they were called liars for decades. Every time they tried to report abuse to the police or to somebody who was taking care of them in a home and no one listened. And so it's forcing them to relive being called a liar even now, even as adults. Because a lot of these, a lot of the, the, the victims don't want to go and see yet another psychiatrist. As you said, they, they, they've been through decades. They've been through this. So now, what you're saying, what the, the the evidence you're getting is they're being called liars again by this. Surely not. Being called liars again, and the thing that worries me the most, um, if what they're saying, and I think that they're telling their truth, if what they're saying is accurate to to what is exactly happening, then. They're doing it to victims who are actually accusing people who are still at high levels of the current sitting Jersey government of lying. Whereas victims who are making accusations against people who are not in power anymore are not being treated this way. So it actually looks like victims are being targeted who may be saying things that actually need to be dealt with in perhaps the court of justice right now. And that is causing them to be blocked in, in getting their message not just to the proper authorities once again, but also getting their message out to the world because they're being signed by work. And again, here we are on this island. An island was beautiful, an amazing success story of an island. has everything in the world to offer. And here is how it's treating its victims of abuse. While the government says that they want to do the right thing, they're taking great pains to do the wrong thing to these victims. And the problem is, is as we now look to a committee of inquiry that's going to be millions and millions of pounds, once again the taxpayers paying millions and millions of pounds. Six million pounds, yeah. Six million pounds in this case, and, and in the last case with Operation Rectangle, many more millions. But again, as long as this work is not done properly and it's not completed, and those who need to be brought to justice, brought to justice, this will continue to be not only a burden on the taxpayers, but a burden on this island, an island that has everything the world to offer and whose image should be a good image, an image of wanting to bring justice to victims, of wanting to take care of any business that needs to take care of. And people in the world who want to do business in Jersey want to know that they are going to have legal certainty when they bring their business to the island. They can rely on a sound legal system, a sound judicial system, sound legislators, and people who actually care about getting to the bottom of things and getting them done. And what I'm hearing, and as you know, I'm not from this island, but I work often in the city of London and on Wall Street. Jersey's image is suffering greatly because of this. And as someone who loves this island and also cares about the people who are vulnerable on this island, it all seems like a lose-lose-lose situation when it could be a win-win-win situation. 
watching what these victims are being put through. Um, they're being put through fresh wounds once more. Wounds that they don't deserve. They didn't ask for this. They never put themselves in these positions. These things happened to them when they were too young to fight back, very vulnerable. And now they're being put through it again. And I think there's a good case to be made for it that it would save everyone a great deal of money and it would allow the victims to find the final closure that they need and this island the closure that it needs. And it's better for business, it's better for everyone here. And it's sad to see that what needs to happen, people brought to justice, and we know who those people are. And we can name those people. Uh, we will be naming those people. But if this can happen, and these, these victims get a real and true, sincere apology. They're getting a lot of public apologies and a lot of getting jerked around in the background. They don't take these apologies as sincere because they see how they're being treated by psychiatrists and the government and the lawyers. But if they get sincere apologies, they are willing to, to, to find their closure and the island can move on. And one of the victims told me today, he said, if I could just wake up and know that they were sorry, I could live again. I could be happy again. And I wouldn't, I don't want money. I, I just want to know that they believe me and that they're going to fix this. They're going to make sure that these people can never do this to anyone ever again. And I don't think that's a lot to ask. That does not cost any money. It doesn't cost anything to say I'm sorry. So we, we spent some time this week, uh, as, you, as you know, uh, a team of journalists came with me to the island from publications in the United Kingdom. And also a filmmaker, a documentarian has come in as well. And uh, most of them are all mainland British, but they have all reached out to me independently. And these victims have been telling us, we hear what they're saying in the newspapers, but what we're seeing in the way they're treating us is the same patterns that caused us to get abused in the first place. And they actually believe that some of the abusers may still be abusing people. If that's possible, then that is inexcusable. But the fact is, is we just don't know. We do know that people who are accused by multiple victims are still in very high levels of this government and they're exposed to children and the vulnerable. And that is just not Which that gives distrust. Not okay. Yeah, good. That obviously gives trust to the victims as well, knowing that the government are protecting these people where they could be abused, could still be abusing people. The victims believe that as long as people who the government and the police know have been accused by many people are in power, they believe that that means they're not truly sorry. They're not truly taking responsibility for what has happened. And the propagation of certain amount of lies. And I, I want to say lies, and one of those lies, I'm going to give an example, was that, as we mentioned, Bergerac, the, the TV show that was being filmed at Hotel de Garen, they said that it was only filmed after the children left, but we found out this week that there were a group of children that were still there, and they were at the home while the stars were coming in and out. They were meeting with people like John Nettles. There were adults who were living on the property at the same time as the children and mixing with the children. And there was no controls on that. There was no supervision. It was just a free-for-all. And, and we've now confirmed that that is true. Why would the government say that that was not true? When you say there was adults living with, with the children, what do, what, what, what do you mean by that? The children said that adults were lodging in the home at the same time they were lodging in the home and that the trailers for Bergerac were also lining the roads and that, they, that the stars were overnighting or they were using the trailers and living in the trailers while filming there and that they were mixing openly with the children. Well, the, the, the ones lodging in, in Hope de la Garenne, what was their purpose of being there? Any idea if they weren't with the Bergerac crew or were they with the Bergerac crew? We understand they weren't and that they were separate lodgers who had been given permission to live in the home as adults not because they needed to live there. My understanding is that the government allowed them to live there and we don't really know why. We're still trying to get to the answers. Do you think this committee of inquiry that's been set up now will get to the truth? Will it be fit for purpose? I really hope so. I think that there's some hope on the part of the victims that this time this may be the time that it will get to the bottom of things. The inquiry is not promising to admit fault or liability, and it's not agreeing to come out with a list of names or to bring anyone to justice, 
but it does seem to have the power to do so uh, if it would like to. Now, that gives, I think, a lot of the victims hope, and I don't want to speak on their behalf, but it sounds like one victim today said he doesn't believe that anything that's government approved will ever lead to justice, because he doesn't trust the government anymore, he doesn't trust the police anymore. But other victims have said that they believe it could be a great way to go back and, and address what hasn't been addressed. And all that they want is to have this finished, and one of them said to me, until it's done, it, we'll keep reliving it in our minds. It, we'll never be able to escape. I have to go to bed at night and relive the pictures in my mind. And all I need is for someone to say that I'm not lying anymore. I, you know, that, that there can be good in the world and that people care about us is all I need to, to be free again. And he said, I've been trying to be free of this my whole life. And I don't think that the Islanders, the Islanders who I meet every day, here in St. Helier and in Jersey, I haven't met any of them who don't seem to think that that isn't a reasonable thing for a victim to want to have. And that doesn't cost any money to say we are sorry and we believe you. Because it seems quite ironic in, in a way, doesn't it? Because our government, if you like, are trying to protect the image of Jersey by keeping all this the, the, and some of the alleged abusers uh, out of the justice system, keeping it all quiet. This is damaging our reputation. If, 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 if they were to apologise to the victims, bring these uh, protected people, as it were, abusers, to, to justice, that would be surely the, that would be the, the best way forward for everybody. Wouldn't yes, it? I mean then they could. They, obviously, we've seen some people who were brought to justice. In fact, some of the victims this week also mentioned they felt that the people brought to justice were not the major people who needed to be brought to justice. That those were lesser players, if you will. Show trials. We, we, I, I done a blog that you know it was show trials. That, that is the general con consensus with a lot of people. Some of the victims made it sound like they believed that those were um, trials that were to make it seem as though justice was being done when in fact it wasn't. Now, it's going to come down to the inquiry. I think we, we should give the inquiry a chance and respect Sally Bradley and see she's obviously very experienced and I think that there's a chance that maybe somebody from Off Island can come in and shed some light. Uh, I'm, off, I'm Off Island, there are other people come from Off the Island who have something to contribute, but I think as long as people want to see everyone better off in the end, then you can't really question why that wouldn't be a good thing.